please that we have a conversation. So on the front page of the Daily Graphic, we have President Ekufuado to champion AU financial institutions. Barclays Bank Ghana, now APSA. 2020 National Science Math Quiz in danger. Schools complain of inadequate funds. On the front page of the Ghanaian Times, busted. Customs Division intercepts 1,964 slabs of weed. Impounds vehicle arrest driver. Murdered nurse, crime scene set ablaze. Martin Amidu says, uh, don't politicize uh, Airbus saga. At the assembly of heads of states, uh, government, president's crowned champion of AU financial institutions. Barclays Bank now named Absa Bank Ghana Limited. On the front page of the finder, we have government clears all BDCs, legacy debts. Dr. Baumia commends APSA Bank's support to Ghana. Trade Ministry to hand over GCNet West Blue Systems to Unipass. Ghana Card, 8.5 million registered. Front page of the Daily Statesman. Osofo Chiri Abosom gears up for 2020 with manifesto launch. Rawlings charges Christians to be fearless like Jesus Christ. Emails finally nail Mahama. Confirms JDM's Embraer Chop Chop letter. African Union honors President Kufuadro. Appoints him champion of the African Union financial institutions. On the front page of the Chronicle, when dollars are flowing, coins are making noise. Ejisuman SHS at it again. Ghana to become oil giant in Africa, says Egbert Fable. Ekufuado gets new appointment at AU. And on the front page of the new crusading guide, we have Airbus scandal. Mahama must break silence. Dankwa Institute fires. Ekufado appointed African Union financial institution champion. Unipass needs GCNet West Blue Systems to operate. Wager gets new chief. Embraer Aircraft Negotiations, Mahama letter not fake, as presidential aid aids email communication throws NDC's defense into limbo. Let's do some online stories. And on citynewsroom.com, we have Baumia to catalog MPP's achievements at town hall meeting today. Unresolved murder cases in Ashanti region. I don't control law courts, says the Ashanti regional minister. Unresolved murder cases offer bounties, reward for information, says Bright O'Drew. Government clears $1 billion legacy debt owed bulk oil distributors. Men's Gold customers angry with police for blocking their attempt to petition presidency. And on citybusinessnews.com, boost tours capacity and spend less dollars on oil imports, says energy consultant. 
government must review revenue projections over Talos, Tala Ghana's woes, says IES. 16% policy rate must reflect must reflect in cheaper credit, says Chamber of Commerce. My joint on and my joint online we have majority poised to push through approval of nine hundred and ninety million dollar loan for Pualugu Dam. One thousand and seventy two test HIV positive in Tema. And on BBC.com we have thousands packed stadium for Moy's funeral. All right, and so Nigerian militants burn to death motorists as they sleep in their cars. That's a very sad story there. All right. So for more news, you can go to citynewsroom.com and you can also go to City Business News for more business news. So let me introduce my guest to you. I have um, seated on my left, I have Ibrahim Tanko Amidu, who is who's the executive director of Star Ghana Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You're welcome. Pleasure. It's good to have you here. Good to be here, too. And I have my other guest um, seated, Yaro Kasambata, who's a lecturer in security and intelligence management at UPSA. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Fantastic. It's good to have you here. Good to see you. Yeah. Have I seen you this year? No, I've been here. You've been here, but have I seen you this well, year? Yeah. I think, I think you, you hosted I, I me think here. We've, I think we've talked. We've, we've, we've been not on the show before. Three weeks ago, I was here. Okay. All right. Yes, yes, Memory yes. Memory lapses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you have a lot on your mind. So. <laughs> All right. So let's get into the first story for the day. Unresolved murders in Ashanti. Killing of nurse raises fresh concerns over security in the region. Um, let me get into the... I'll read a the stories here and then we'll, we'll, we'll position ourselves to have a conversation. So the first one I want to read, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, is on citynewsroom.com. Um, unresolved murder cases in Ashanti region, I do not control law courts, says the regional minister. The Ashanti regional minister, Simon Osai Mensah, has said he cannot be held responsible for unresolved murder cases in the region. According to him, the law courts are handling these cases and should be held accountable. What has been the cause of death of the people who have been killed? This is a question he's asking. Some are family issues. We don't bundle all those with the other ones that have different causes. Those that were between husband and wife, the cases are in court. I do not control the law court. So once the issue gets to the law court, it is the, it is the court that handles it. So if you want to find out why the cases have been unresolved, you call the court, he said. The minister, who is also the head of the Ashanti Regional Security Council, further indicated that he cannot be held responsible for the security of residents in the region. These are things which are not easy to control. We cannot check everybody's house. What we have to do is the general security situation. It is not the responsibility of the council to fix the security problems of families in their homes. Um, <clears throat> Yaro, I, as somebody who is very interested, vested, and in teaches security and intelligence, um, what is your take on this, his comments initially, regarding the security situation? And then we'll come back and look at the general situation in the, in the, in the, in the region. Well, I think he, he, he could have put it better. 
I mean, he could have put it better. The, you know, security is a shared responsibility. Mm. And so if he had even said that security is a shared responsibility, everybody has a role to play. The mm. police alone can't solve crime. I, I agree. In fact, the, in most, in most in the countries where crime uh, uh, have been successfully resolved, mm. it took the, you know, the organization, I mean, the police service of that country, the, yeah. you know, citizens' awareness, the judicial system, the entire environment, I mean, the infrastructure, Mm. I mean, the, the technology and everything put together. So it's yeah. a shared responsibility. If you um, see that it is not the responsibility of the, of the regional security, security council, council to fix people's security problems in, in their, their homes, homes, then it shifts the discussion to a very fundamental issue, which, you know, then, you know, takes us to examine the reason why things are the way they are. Mm. Okay, we need to get our you know people in authorities to understand the scope of their responsibilities what they are supposed to do yeah and where their job stops and where the you know citizens you know right you know begins mm. you are the administrative head of the region mm. whatever goes wrong it's it's in your hands mm. whatever goes right is in your hands yeah. you need to rally people around and get them to assist you know to get things done mm. so that if there are crime you know rising in the region and we need to find a way to solve it and bring it down there is there is a, a way you put it to start the rallying call mm. uh, but if you begin to you know apportion blames and um, you know put the you know situation squarely at the doorstep of you know, people's personal responsibility. Yeah. Then if they come to tell you that, well, I, I, I'm, I'm taking my, my security in my mm. hands, so I'm going to uh, arm myself. Mm. When people begin to think that the states can't take care of them mm. and they must take care of themselves, they might do things and in the process even break the law. Yeah. You will end up having a very lawless environment. So mm. I think the minister could have put it in a better way. Um, we have crimes rising. We, we, we have to admit that we have a problem. Mm. We have the police having a very uh, low success rate of clearance. I mean, turning crime around, resolving the issues, finding the killers, putting them before court. Mm. The judiciary, you know, it's a slow grind. Having to process the case, yeah. examine the evidence, and then apply the law. Mm. Put the corporate away or acquit them. It's another, you know, section or department of our, you know, criminal um, environment mm, yeah. or our, our, you know, I should say, the justice system. Mm. Okay, so, you know, so that when a crime is reported, the police, you know, comes in, the process, they, you know, seen. They, if they find, you know, corporate or suspect, they put the case before the attorney general. Mm. The attorney general takes the case now to court, and the court now takes over. Mm. Now, we need to even begin to examine how our court work, what are the things that are slowing down the court processes, yeah. manual you know, data entry, and all these things so that we can court automation and you know, get things to speed up, how information is stored. You, you don't have to go look for uh, files on crimes 10 years ago and somebody mm. has to climb a ladder and be looking for you know, dusted files and yeah. all that. By this time, we should be digitizing data yeah. so that if I'm looking for a case in, let's say, a January of 10 years ago, I put in the month, I put in the year. Mm. So you have a limited data to, you know, to scan through. through. Yeah. You know, this is how we can help improve. So you may see murder on the rise, low success rates. In between, you have infrastructure issues. You mm. have things that you, we need to do to improve the system. We mm. have a way to harness our justice you know, system yeah. to grind in the way that we want. Because after all, we are constructing a social order. Yeah. We don't want an environment where crime is high, mm. crime is unresolved, uh, people feel insecure. Then they begin to take the law into their own hands and do things that break the law. In the end, they create more insecurity. Yeah. So I think Mr. Minister could have put it better. And going forward, we could begin to address some of the fundamental issues mm. that hamper the smooth administration of justice in this country, the effective management of crime, 
uh, what do you and think, the police itself. What do you think accounts for the police's um, low turnaround in uh, resolution? A number of factors. I mean, see, before you even come to the police, sometimes when a crime is reported, by the time the police arrives at the scene, the crime scene is defiled by curious uh, neighbors, yeah. shocked neighbors, uh, you know, people who are just out there to look at something. They defile the crime scene. So the police arrives. By the time the police is actually attending to the crime scene, mm. they have a lot of work to do in uh, trying to decipher which object lying on the scene is a crime or it's part of the crime or which ones have been brought there. Yeah, but yeah, but Yaro, I mean, if if I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm also somebody who has been very. Um, fascinated with crime investigation, you know, and then I'm asking myself that if, if for example, um, you the police arrive at a crime scene, were there people there already that are onlookers? What are the questions that you ask to determine what has actually taken place since human beings started arriving on the scene? You know, because I think that also helps to to them place based on three, four, five different accounts you hear. You can you can pretty much decipher what's happened since the med the, 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 the criminal fled the scene. What else has what the changes have taken place? Yes. I don't know if that makes any you sense. You know, it, it makes absolute sense. The point I was hoping to, you know, uh, draw attention to with mm. uh, the issue I raised about defiling the crime scene. Yeah is to get citizens educated. Okay. The citizens must know that um, when you report a crime, mm. um, you must not out of um, curiosity uh, attend to the crime scene yourself. Mm. And in the end, a footprint could have solved the problem. Okay. But then you have gone to You've plant your footprint on that footprint. Several footprints. And yeah. now we can't even tell who, you know, which one. Mm. So, I mean, patterns are destroyed. Mm. So if we begin to also alert you know, citizens that when you chance upon a crime scene, uh, don't out of curiosity overreact mm. and go there and start touching things and start mm. moving you know, things, moving the body. And all that could have you know, been the, the, the code that broke the case was mm. maybe a penhead. Yeah. And you might have picked that penhead yes. out of you know, curiosity. or you, you don't even know that a pen could even we, solve we, a crime. Need, yeah. Yes. So... Then we need the citizens to also appreciate that fact. Mm. We need the police to improve on competence. We need the police to improve on logistics. Mm. We need the judiciary to also improve on competence, logistics, how they even interpret forensics, mm. how we apply forensics to solving crime, even lawyers appreciating forensics yeah. and how it works in dealing with crime. Okay. So that in the end, we have an entire justice you know, system grinding a bit faster mm -hmm. because mind you even if you have a, a, a growing crime rate and you have the police attending to it in a way that they produce results even yeah. faster yeah. it goes a long way to build confidence in mm -hmm. the system than having the crime rise mm -hmm. and having its you know success dwindling mm -hmm. if anything at all okay all right thank you um Mr. Amidu, the the from an administrative and a governance perspective, yep. what do you make of what's happening in the Ashanti region? Now, I know that across the country yep. there are other murders that have happened and so on, mm. but we are, you know, that the, the spotlight is now on the Ashanti region. Yep. We are looking at in the last possibly under a year, yep. okay, seven, eight murders that have taken place. Mm. And there hasn't really been much traction in yeah. terms of resolution yeah. to any of these. What, what do you make of where we find ourselves right now? Well, thank you very much. Um, I think it's a very worrying situation. Um, whether it's Ashanti, Upper East, Volta, it is worrying. Because every citizen is entitled to the protection of the state, yes. to the right to liberty, mm. to free movement, etc. And I think that if we have noticed a trend in the Ashanti region, for example. This is where then we, the state apparatus needs to mobilize everything. Mm. Intelligence, police, mm. citizens, etc. Mm. First, to seek to understand why. 
and secondly to seek to address the issues mm -hmm. you know so that it takes more than the police it takes more than the citizens um, what are the state uh, what uh, national security etc what are they doing mm -hmm. because this is where we need to find to have um, a more coordinated approach to solving yeah. this and um, just to touch briefly on the, the issue of uh, uh, the minister's pronouncements yeah. um, coming in I was listening to your intro remarks and um, mm -hmm. one of your colleagues uh, mentioned the issue of emotional intelligence yeah. um, it's really really critical particularly for leaders mm. you know uh, sometimes the way the message is delivered is as important as the message itself yeah. that's number one that you might deliver an unpleasant message you might deliver a difficult message mm. but in a way that makes people to understand that yeah. something is being done bear with us etc etc mm. but you don't deliver it well you even um, aggravate the situation, aggravate the situation. Mm. Yeah. and um, this is not the first time um, decades back we had a head of state, you know, who burst out in frustration. You know, uh, yeah. and uh, you don't inspire confidence. We don't expect the head of state to command the reins to come mm. down. But we expect the head of state to tell us what measures they are putting in place yeah. in case there's drought. Mm. Likewise, you know, we expect we don't expect the regional minister to go around solving the problem. In everybody's house. Yeah. But we expect the regional minister mm. to assure us that the state machinery is being mobilized mm. to ensure yeah. that this is done. And I think not to begin to distinguish or differentiate citizens. Every citizen is entitled to the protection of the law. Mm. Whether the person is a prostitute, allegedly a prostitute, allegedly whatever, yeah. you know, mm. let the law deal with that part of the person's mm. behavior, yeah. occupation, mm. that may be illegal. But in terms of the right to life, yeah. you know, your profession should not mm. be a basis on which you decide whether this person needs to lead right or to not. Know. And then I think um, the issue around um, the police and the management of, you know, crimes. Mm. Um, first, the issue of communication with citizens. I understand, you know, from what you read that the police are declining to comment for now. But I think it is true communicating with citizens that you might be able to jog somebody's memory ah, I saw this lady walking yeah. here and there were two people, yeah. oh, I'm going to... So that whole thing about building the trust between citizens and the police is very important. Mm. And trust is predicated on what? Communication. Yeah. You know, yeah. of course, uh, my brother Yaro mentioned the issue about the judicial system. And I think that's also quite important because even if the police were to apprehend the culprits today and send them to court, and it's going to take four or five years to hmm. so adjudicate. But what's it's, the challenge here, though? Yeah. What is it that makes it drag? Yeah. And is there no way that we can speed things up? Mm. I mean, I remember under uh, um, President Kufour's tenure mm. for the for the, uh, the, 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 the 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 driver courts, mm. they created a fast track court system. Yeah. Yeah. You know that uh, even sometimes within a day. Mm. You have cases sorted out. Exactly. Is there no way we can speed up the mm. process? Mm. Yeah. I think um, there are ways in which, because um, for me, this is such a complex issue that there isn't one silver or magic bullet mm. that would mm. solve it. One, the state attorney's department, or the attorney general's department, yeah. to what extent are they resourced, equipped, motivated enough, because we read about adjournments on the basis of the fact that the attorneys didn't turn up, etc. The police, sometimes we hear that, you know, the ways in which they process the cases for court mm. are such that they have to be told to go back and do this, etc., etc. Mm. The police prosecutors, do they have the skills? Mm. They cost themselves, how they set up. I remember Danida, yeah, the Danish government, invested a lot of money in uh, the computerization and etc., mm. you know, all in an effort to speed up. Yeah. So I think it's a lot of, you know, pieces of the puzzle that need to be brought together, mm -hmm. but a coordinating point so that we don't have all these things happening without recourse to each other. Else, these reforms will not complement mm -hmm. each other and at the end of the day, won't, won't get the benefit because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really sad to see a judge or a magistrate sitting in court and writing longhand, mm -hmm. you know, 
um, how does a person follow it? Mm. And as a result, confidence in the system is going down. I mean, just very quickly mentioning the issue of Major Mahama. Yeah. The outrage that greeted, you know, the murder of yeah. Major, the cries for revenge, etc. How many years down the line, the case is still plodding through the court system. Yeah. And you think next time people would have the confidence to say, <laughs> we're going to cooperate with the uh, system. Mm. So I think it is in our interest as a nation to ensure that justice is delivered expeditiously and also fairly. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. Please don't go anywhere. You're watching City TV. We'll be right back. Yvonne, a few words please. Everyone is talking about the fire at your production house last week. How are you holding up? Has production stalled? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. My crew and everyone on my set is perfectly fine because I insure with serene insurance. As a matter of fact, I've had all my equipment replaced, including the vehicles that were affected. My workers have been sorted out. Even my production downtime has been covered, so it's all good. I have a meeting to attend to, so I have to get going. Sorry about that. Which insurance company did you mention? Serene Insurance, the new face of insurance, a member of First Sky Group. Welcome back and remember the hashtag is breakfast daily. The WhatsApp line is on your screen plus two three three five five zero five eight five eight three two. And uh, we want to continue our conversation and have a get into this, this subject. Um, the vice president is going to have a town hall meeting today. Uh, let me just quickly read a story from citynewsroom.com and then we will have a conversation about that. Uh, Baumia to account for MPP's promises at February 11th town hall meeting in Kumasi. Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Baumia will on Tuesday, um, February 11th, that's today, um, address a town hall meeting in Kumasi in the Ashanti region. The meeting will focus solely on updating Ghanaians on the fulfillment of government's promises and commitments made ahead of the 2020 elections. It will be recalled that in 2016, in the 2016 manifesto of the MPP, it committed to 388 promises. President Anel Kufuado last year tasked the office of the vice president to lead an exercise to produce empirical data on the status of these 388 promises. The then candidate and now president, Kufuado, made to the people of Ghana. Addressing journalists in Accra on Sunday, the Minister of Information, Kojo Opon Nkrumah, said, having completed the exercise with the approval of Cabinet, Dr. Baumia will lead the town hall meeting that will provide bullet-by-bullet bullet details on the performance of the administration in fulfilling its manifesto promises. Mr. Nkrumah said the exercise will be heavily data-driven and the data will be available to, Ghan to the Ghanaian public and other stakeholders. All right, let me start with you, uh, Ibrahim Tanko. The promises were made, 388, all well and good. Now, four years to deliver on the promises. What can we expect to hear from... Um, the town hall meeting that is one question the i think i want you to proceed that with how important is it to have these kind of communication platforms to let the citizenry 
have a clear understanding mm. of what it is that yeah. government is actually doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's extremely important. It's the basis on which democracy thrives. It's the basis on which democracy survives. That the leaders are accountable to the citizens. Mm -hmm. That we have the opportunity to ask them. Not just to wait four years when we're about to vote, you tell us you've done this. But that a continuous dialogue mm -hmm. that enables us to find out what is being done, why it's being done that way, and what could be done better. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very um, useful, necessary, and more of it should be done by everybody. Okay. That's one level. Um, but I think for these things to be effective, first, I mean, we've talked about the right to information. Because we also need to have access to the data and to be able to interrogate it. Mm. There is so much that the human mind can absorb at a certain. Yeah. So if there is a, a forum, and we are talking about 300 and how many? 88. 88 promises that your uh, <laughs> presentation will be data driven. At my age, how much data can I store in my head, yeah. you know, at a certain and be able to interrogate? So I think one is why not make this available before? Mm. And that enables a constructive engagement. Okay. So I think that is really important. Mm. Uh, the format I've had occasion to question, not just under this government, but the previous ones, because it soon degenerates into almost a rally. Because you have those in the room there who clap and cheer at, you know, every... Everything this, and everything. that really negates the, the, the point. I mean, mm -hmm. you could organize something for your foot soldiers and etc. And, you know, have that cheering party yeah. going on. But I think if you want a constructive engagement, it needs to be moved out of that and be able to. So mm -hmm. who comes in, how it is organized, I think it's um, important. Okay. But my um, fundamental point is that this is a good thing. Mm. The more should be done at all levels and for all citizens. It's a very interesting point you raised there. Um, to not, not not to fill the room with, um, you know, the 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 yes men, yeah. as it were, mm. who, regardless of whatever you say, they will not question or interrogate anything. They will yeah. clap and they will hail yeah. and, yeah. and make all the noise. Um, <clears throat> what do you think we'll see today? <laughs> well, I would see attempts at justifying or justification. Uh, I'm not sure I will see much in the uh, 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 of rebuttals. Okay. Except that it is set up in such a way that it enables re people to really question okay. what he's seeing. Mm. But I think a lot of it would. Well, election year okay. accountability <laughs> is usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your your perspective on this matter, um, I do agree with um, Ibrahim Tanko on the issue of you can easily get it can become like a political rally, you know, almost in a in a, in a scaled down version. Um, but how do we take some of these opportunities and turn them into uh, galvanizing grounds? Mm -hmm. For, for good governance, mm. as opposed to for politicking? Well, I think much of what we have been up to in this country is more of the politicking than good governance. I mm. mean, I look around and sometimes I hardly even see good governance. Some I people see politics. say, how do you have good governance without politics? Oh, no, no, no. They are, they are two separate things. Okay, I mean, take look, us into that. They are two separate things. I mean, politicking and good governance... <laughs> Governance is the way you function. Politicking okay. is just offering options. Okay. Look around you. And, you know, from waste management to traffic to crime to everything, governance is the way you function. Mm. Look around you and apply this definition to the things you see. How are you functioning? <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, so, I mean, the politicking is the opportunity to give legitimacy to government mm -hmm. so you have a body of elected people who go to office they form you know a government uh, but governance as in the process of how things are done yeah it's even often separated from government as a body of institution mm -hmm. that exists 
Mm. So you can have a body of institution mm. that are functioning poorly. Mm. Okay. So you can have governments. Mm. It's legitimate, but they are functioning poorly. Mm. So politics, government, governance are all the same thing. Mm. We often lump them together in the heat of the argument. Mm. Things can, you know, we can lose sight of these, you know, details. Yeah. But we've got to focus more on impact mm. as opposed to output. Okay. 380 promises. Mm. I have done 200. Hey, let's measure the impact of what you've done, not output. Mm. But the pro I'm sure... Yeah. Oh, okay, you go. Wait. I'm sure mm. that your CEO here mm. is looking more for impact than output. Yeah, okay. Impact is that you showed up in the morning for a morning oh. show. You have come. All the cameras here are all elements of and output. The output mm. yeah. the, you know, you have come, but the impact is w what you do, how you do it, the mm. result that is achieved, the bottom mm. line. Mm. So if everybody keeps showing up in the morning, yeah. they sign a book, I was mm. here 5 a.m., mm. and CTFM bottom lines are still dwindling, yeah. and you can't pay bills, no your CEO is seeing yeah. the impact and say, hey, guys, mm. we can't be showing up here 5 a.m. in the morning, yeah. and all our produce and everything we do, you know, don't get bought, yeah. and we can't pay the bills, yeah. our impact... You know, down the line, yeah. is not you know encouraging. Yeah. So I think we can move on beyond yeah. the output. Yeah. We've done yeah. two hundred out of three hundred, yeah. and then measure the minute impact yeah. of what we do. Yeah. We've talked about unemployment. We can say we've created hundred thousand jobs. Subtract that from the jobs that have been lost through the you know banking you know sector. Yeah. And even that alone, yeah. you know, can give you an idea of the net job creation that mm. you are, you know, looking at. Mm. What is the impact of that on livelihood? Mm. What is the impact on that on the, you know, general economy? Mm. When we've done these things, it, it, you know, it gives you a more scientific approach mm. to examining how a government has functioned. Mm -hmm. And then, well, and, this, and these are high standards issues where yeah. you can give yourself a target that, you know, you know is a burden. Mm. You put on yourself a burden of high performance and then when you know, you have been able to satisfy a certain degree of it. Mm. You know, you can rally your citizens around it mm. and say that, look, in view of the challenges and what we've been able to achieve, yeah. giving another opportunity mm. at improving X, Y, Z, mm. I think I can do a bit more. This is, I think, where mm. we can begin to draw the lines and then mm. see, okay, from your output, we can measure impact from your, you know, from government, we can measure governance. Mm -hmm. We see how we function around, yeah. and then we can begin to see how we do. But well, to you know, speak to what he will say, you know, much later, you know, today will be an exercise of if you know, <laughs> in futility. In, in futility. Yeah. Let's let's you know hear what you know he says this afternoon. Mm -hmm. It will be good to hear some of the things that um, he will be talking about, mm -hmm. and then we can begin to measure the impact thereof. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want to ask something about the issue of um, governance structures mm. that um, prevent effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. Uh, I am not a governance expert by any stretch of imagination. Um, we all are. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wanted to know from you what you think in terms of, or what your observations have been mm. in terms of looking at the way uh, our governance structure mm. is, uh, are, are there ways we can improve yeah. the systems that will increase efficiency Just, and accountability? Yeah. I'm, I'm more interested in the accountability yeah. aspect because mm. it looks like there's always somebody looking to for a, a, a way to pass the buck to somebody mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. yeah, but you, were, you should, you should yeah, also have yeah, done it yeah, or you yeah, could have yeah, done yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. I think um, the just building up on them, what Yaro said and yeah. the, around governance, governance institutions, I mean, in terms of the system structures, processes for accountability, we have the formal ones that are detailed in mm -hmm. our constitution, etc. But we also have the less formal ways of um, exacting accountability. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, either citizens decided that we wouldn't vote, or we would vote this way, or you know, no, no electricity, no vote, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of the formal systems, you know, the constitution envisages, you know, a separation, as it were powers between mm. parliaments, the executive, yeah. the judiciary. We have the media and civil society 
almost as countervailing, you know, um, forces to try and then ensure that there's accountability. Yeah. If you examine the relationships, first between Parliament and the executive, mm. even if it was not stated clearly, the, 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 the reality is that Parliament has not been able to perform its oversight functions mm. as effectively as, as it should. It should. Mm. One, you know, this whole thing about, you know, the majority of the president's uh, the ministers, ministers coming from parliament yeah. just means that people spend their time trying to catch the president's eye, you know, to ensure that either you get a juicy position, board, etc. And, you know, without mentioning names, we have seen parliamentarians who have attempted to take their governments to task. And what happened to them mm. in the Fourth Republic? Mm. So we need to look at parliaments. How do we support parliament to be more effective? Not just in the relationship, but mm. also in the way in which it is organized. Yeah. We've seen and heard of complex contracts, agreements, pass within a day. Mm. And you wonder how many of the MPs would have actually been able to understand what was going what on. Was going on. Yeah. Other parliaments are what they call the scrutiny offices which are staffed by professionals. So mm. if there was a contract on oil and gas, they bring together some oil and gas experts. You go through, you offer a technical opinion to parliament, yeah. and then is the basis on which, you know, they, 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 they scrutinize it. Mm. Is it being done in our parliament? Well, I, I don't know, we don't have a scrutiny office. Mm. We've been talking about it for uh, this. Thing. So on what basis do they make all those uh, decisions on these complex issues? Mm. We have the issue of the number of, the sheer number of people that the president can appoint. Some have described as that we actually have an imperial presidency in Ghana. He's a, a king in all but name, mm -hmm. you know. And in that way, you know, almost all the institutions of state are subservient. Yeah. Take the police, which and that feeds into the larger conversation about our culture. Right? And our constitution. Yeah. So we know, but we've created a constitution yeah. because of who we are as a people. No, because even if we created based on our culture, mm -hmm. if you move to where the kingdoms and the chiefdoms and mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. built into those systems are accountability mechanisms. Mm -hmm. We may not see it from the outside, okay. but even the Asantehene who is, appears very powerful and etc. I think within his court and within the system mm -hmm. are mechanisms for holding him accountable okay but so we have transported that thing about a king a chief as our head of state without, without building in bringing in those accountability yeah. me mechanisms mm. and that's what we are where we are mm. the media could do better of course i mean wherever you go in this world you do have media houses that are aligned to parties and etc but even those that are aligned to parties yeah do their work on the basis of evidence of facts and which is why civil society joined with the media in pushing for the right information mm. uh, acts yeah. you know civil society could do better citizens were challenged by the president to be citizens and not spectators mm -hmm. how much have we translated that you know yeah. into uh, ensuring that a government is accountable to mm. us at the end of the day and then of course the parties don't help because an issue comes up and before you realize, they have muddied it up and then, you know, position the conversations around NDC and MPP. Yeah. So it is very difficult for you even to put your voice inside because as soon as you say A, mm. it either ties up with what the NDC is saying or it ties up with the yeah. MPP. So some people just say, well, I'll try, I'll try and just avoid this whole thing because I don't want somebody to start describing who my great-grandfather yeah. was and how he <laughs> met my grandmother and etc. So they, they just back off. But we can't allow ourselves to be intimidated mm -hmm. out of speaking for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Else, where are we heading to? All right. Well, the last conversation we want to have is regarding the National Science and Math Quiz. Um, the the story here in the Daily Graphic, I'm going to read from, from the Daily Graphic. Um, it says, National, 2020 National Science Math Quiz in danger. Schools complain of inadequate funds. Um, the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS, says it will be difficult for schools to organize the students for this year's National Science and Math Quiz um, at the regional and national levels as a result of inadequate funds. 
We therefore wish to inform management <clears throat> excuse me, that until adequate funds are made available, schools will not be in a position to participate in the National Science and Math Quiz in any form. A letter signed by the president of CHAS, Alaji Yakub A.B. Abubakar, and addressed to the director general of the GES, said, dated, uh, dated February 6, 2020, the letter was copied to all regional directors of education, regional CHAS chairman, chairpersons, all zonal CHAS chairman and chairpersons, um, and prime time Ghana Limited, the organizer of the NSMQ. At the first quarterly meeting for 2020 held at the National Chair Secretariat on February 8, 2020, the National Executive um, of CHAS has discussed thoroughly the challenges of the organization of the NMSQ at various levels. After a lengthy discussion, after a lengthy discussion, we have concluded that it will be difficult to organize the students for the NMSQ at the regional and national levels, it said. It, however, expressed hope that the concerns of CHAS would be addressed quickly to facilitate the smooth organization of the quiz. Now, let me come to you, Yaro. Um, this is very sad where we find ourselves because, in my view, the National Science and Math Quiz not only um, provided, you know, a very high level of um, challenge, you know, on our on our on our on our TV, you know, viewing, um, for people to be entertained and, and excited and all of that, and all that. But also, the competition, I believe, also encourages other people, especially younger people, coming into the level that the seniors were playing at to be interested in math and to be interested in science and so on. So if we find ourselves here now, inadequate funds, how did we come to this point? And what can we do to make sure this thing doesn't go down? Oh, I think that in the, in the heart of this matter is two subjects, math and science. Okay. This, these two subjects fascinate me. I mean, you look at every you know, society that has developed. Yeah. They developed on the on the strength of these two subjects, mathematics and science. Very few countries have developed using English, because I know non-English speaking countries who are very, yeah, advanced, very advanced. You know, yeah. but in, in this country, I think we even you know peg <laughs> intelligence to how much you know silky English you can speak. <laughs> you know, but mathematics and science <laughs> is, are the hinges on which you know society revolve. Yeah. And I think that for me, I like to take this out of the uh, you know, beyond the context of the entertainment mm -hmm. and the competition mm -hmm. it creates for the children, mm -hmm. to look at the interest it whips mm -hmm. in the learning of these two subjects. Mm -hmm. Historically, these two subjects have been the bane of our education. Mm -hmm. Either we are not teaching it well, mm -hmm. or there's something else we are not doing right. The interest mm -hmm. yeah. just isn't there. Yeah, yeah. So the the science and math quiz has come to the you know whip up the interest mm -hmm. and it's growing. Mm -hmm. I think we should. no called STEM education. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, look, I think we should just find the money and do it. Yes. I mean, in this country, when it comes to this thing, there's mm -hmm. no money. Mm -hmm. But you, you hear if there's something else, you know, that the politician needs immediately, we money find the fun. money. Yeah. And then, we, you know, so let's just find the money and sponsor mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. so that at least for what is worth, the interest it generates, mm -hmm. you know, in the children mm -hmm. to learn science and math, yeah. you know, can continue. Yeah. And then beyond the entertainment and the competition, we can look at the... The, the strategic value mm. of how math and science yeah. can transform our environment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, look around you and see everything that isn't right. Mm. You can find its roots in mathematics. Mm. You can That's find its nice. roots in science. science yeah. And so if we can use these two subjects yeah. as the touch lights that we shine into our society, yeah. there's a lot more that we can change. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the science laboratories are supposed to be in our schools are not there. And, you know, even where they are, where they are not sufficiently uh, equipped, mm. you know, we should even be, begin to have mathematics, you know, laboratories, if there's anything like that. A place where children yeah, can go the and then, and then mm -hmm. learn, you know, we need to whip up, you know, this interest mm. from traffic, waste collection. I don't like calling it waste, waste management. Because when you look at the management function, 
you don't see them when they come Man, to the way management situation. is a dream. That's yes. where we are going. So, but <laughs> let's look at cool. let's look at how yes. we can use math and yeah, science yeah. to solve the issue of waste yes, management, management, traffic congestion. Mm. Galam say, mm. Mm. Yeah. you know, natural resources and everything yeah. else mm. are embedded mm. in mm. in these two mm. subjects. Mm. Let's find the money so that because this sponsorship, I don't think is is anything. I'm sure. Even if they approach uh, a large tankos organization, <laughs> <laughs> you know they could make some, you know, mm. money available. City FM can also, you know, support, mm. but government must find the money. I think, you know, when it comes to these subjects, mm. government don't have money. Mm. But in, in other things, we have <laughs> the money. money yeah. So let's find the money and do this, so that we can begin to see um, a certain generation transforming our mm. country mm. using these, you know, two mm. subjects, science and maths. Yo. Take on this. Well, I completely agree. Um, I don't know if I misunderstood a section there, uh -huh. article where I think the GES was asking interested schools to come forward or something. And I think if that is the case, and if I'm understanding it that way, it's privileging the privileged schools because we've seen in previous competitions the old boys and girls of the class A schools come out to organize this and that for the yeah. student, the participants. Yeah. Um, so we, we need to ensure that whatever funding mechanism we put in place yeah. is equitable. Okay, so, so yeah. just to put it in context, yeah. so prior to the free HHS, yeah. right, um, there was a component of school fees mm -hmm. that went to the National Science and Maths quiz. Okay. You know, so Oh, from the from the uh, inception of the, of a free SHS, mm. that component mm. does not come from the schools There's anymore. More, but true. you know, and yeah. that's that's okay. where the challenge has yes, come so, from. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yes, we do. The, the the funding challenges are real. The mm. issue is now how do we, we fund? fund yes. Does government uh, create you know a pot yeah. of gold somewhere mm. that they take mm. money from yeah. that to fund yeah. it? What, what, what? Well, I think first the government needs to step in. But knowing, based on experience, mm. uh, how government funded ports go, uh, I think it needs mm. to be complemented by you know funding from industry. Who benefits mm. really when we begin to produce good science, mass, you know, yeah. um, products? I think industry benefits, and mm. it's in the interest of industry because they keep on complaining, rightly so that the products that are coming out of the schools and the universities are not fit for purpose and etc. So in put your money where your mouth or your complaints are. Put something into that pot. Mm. We are citizens, you know. I would say, well, all students should come in. But again, that then disadvantages the certain schools. Certain schools. Yeah. So I would say let industry, let government, but also let we the citizens. If we just said anybody who is interested in seeing the mass and science quiz continue, text one city, you know, mm. to a certain short code. I'm sure we could raise. I'm sure we could raise yeah? You know, sure so we, we haven't tried it. Let's try it, mm. so that the years in which government, because we do know from experience that the first two years after every election, the government just tightens the the, the money pipe. Nothing flows out, mm. and if we are going to rely solely on government, we may suffer in those mm. years. So mm. I would say industry come in. Mm. Citizens, let's walk our talk. Let's donate. Uh, what we may need now is a, a mobilizing force, a mobilizing point. And so, you, City FM, I mean, uh, City, you've done a lot of <laughs> similar mobilizations for sick people, for other distance. Why don't you start something around national science? Let's see if national science and mass quiz donate to the state. You have the credibility, you have the legitimacy. Mm -hmm. And nobody will think that city will take your money and run away with it. Yeah. And we'll all contribute our 50 pesos one city. And you would be surprised that within a month, you would have... Yes, rate, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So that's a challenge I'm throwing to you. Well, not me. <laughs> <laughs> to you. But, but who? <laughs> no, no, who? It's, it's, it's you. It's beneath my pay grade. No, please, it's you. You, you think it's and then go and tell the, I mean, the person who's pay grade. <laughs> yes, 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 and you see that now yeah. he's shifting. Well, well, I'm not necessarily shifting. shifting. I think it's actually a good idea. I think yeah. it's a, I think it's a fantastic idea mm -hmm. for us to 
even say like well, what you suggested you know if you say to everybody regardless of the the, the network that you're on exactly. contribute one city yes, towards yes. the towards so he has the, agreed you know, now so, that it is so, it is within his so, grade now <laughs> but you see, so they will, they will start doing something but, but you see it's yes. it's 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 not just as simple as announcing it on air, no, which is what I would do. Okay. I announce yeah, okay. it on air, but it's the whole system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, yes, 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 yes. But it's just a challenge to you, all you of need us to design the governance yeah, yeah. you know, of it, you know, get a short code, yeah, yeah, even yeah, see yeah, how yeah. it's it's going to be I mean, get how, how to the, buy it. Yes, yeah, I mean how yeah, the whole thing is going yeah, to do. And then, you know, let's get it moving. And I I agree with that Alaji completely on this one. Even beyond, you know, government and industry. The general public. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they've always, you know, risen to, you know, such, mm. you know, challenges. Yeah. Mm. When you watch so social media mm. reaction mm. Mm. when schools are, are competing mm. there, mm. then, mm. then, you know, you, you know, can I mean, see that there's a lot those of us, yeah. you know, who attended Amazon and secondary, <laughs> yeah. that we are not there. Yeah. We just sit back and watch it out. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. You have the Premper yeah. Collier, the yeah. Achimota, and what? Yeah. The, the what? Addis and, and, and most of these schools yeah. have got big men, mm. even in businesses today, mm. you know, I mean, who can help mm. with small, small yeah. donations to, you know, resuscitate it. Mm. So, Let's throw the challenge. All right, fantastic. Well, I've been uh, was joined on the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for yeah. joining me this for morning. Sure. I was joined on the show by Iyaro Kasambata, who is a lecturer in security and intelligence management at the UPSA, and also to Ibrahim Tanko Amidu, who is the executive director of Star Ghana Foundation. Thank you very much for watching the news review segment. We'll come back with the next segment, and don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.